He's uh, Sasha Baron Cohen. The uh, movie is uh, The Dictator. It's uh, open theaters May 16th. Got to see it uh, last week, and uh, he joins us now. Sasha, how are you? Hello there. How are you? Very good. Where are you now? I am in New York. I just flew in from Cannes, actually. What kind of reaction do you get if, if we're in London, where you're from, New York, I know you're in Paris. Uh, when you walk the streets, how different would it be in those three cities? Well, you know, the great thing is, is that people don't really recognize me because I've done so little stuff as myself over the years. Um, basically, um, when I was doing Ali G, you know, there was no paparazzi shots. Or, uh, there was no personal appearance ever. So when Borat came out, I was actually... Um, you know, nobody actually knew who I was. And, in fact, I did my first interview in England as myself today after 15 years of uh, working there on TV. But how tough is this for you now as you go forward that we, we know what you look like or the element of surprise is going to be harder to pull off? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's almost impossible, which is why the latest movie is kind of more traditional in a sense in that it is a scripted comedy with obviously a lot of improvisation, but it does not involve real people like Borat and Bruno and the Ali G Show did. If you, uh, and, and, and seeing this movie, and I guess the difference, I don't know if Borat and Bruno are actually sort of scripted, and I know this this would be considered a, a scripted comedy, but the difference between Borat, Bruno, and The Dictator, as far as knowing what you're going to do and the lines you're going to have, how different? Well, incredibly different. I mean, in Borat, The Ali G Show, Bruno, you know, you don't know, you're dealing with real people who, have, who do not know that they're in a movie. They think they're, you know, being interviewed by a Kazakhstani film journalist or, you know, an Austrian fashion reporter. So they have absolutely no idea. So the, the interview can take any, can go anywhere. And that's why for me as a performer also, you know, sometimes it can get quite dangerous. So people can get violent <laughs> at the end of an interview or pull out a gun or the police can be called. Or, um, so usually it's about, you know, I try and work out where's the quickest way to run out at the end of an interview. <laughs> but you have energy, though, that go. I would think the energy on Borat would be completely different than the energy on The Dictator. Yes. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's incredible. And, you know, when, when you know that something can fall to pieces at any second and you've only got one take, there's incredible energy. So, like, Borat, there's a scene there uh, where there's the rodeo. You know, you've got – I had one take to get it right. And if I didn't, then the scene's out. So there's a lot of tension there. And obviously the crowd started booing it, you know, about 5,000 people booing. Um, and you don't know where it's going to go. And so you, you try and get out of there before what actually did happen, which was about 10 guys on horseback came out with <laughs> nooses who wanted to uh, lynch me. He's Sasha Baron Cohen. The movie is The Dictator. Joining us the Dan Patrick Show. Is that as close as you, you got to death in your mind? Uh, no. Um, I mean, listen, I always try and avoid getting hurt, and I've been fairly successful with it. But... Um, you know, with the cage match at the end of Bruno, I don't know if you've seen that, but there were about 1,500 uh, people in the audience. 200 of them were ex-cons. And, um, you know, the scene that we decided to do was to have, you know, Bruno obviously was a gay Austrian character, was that him and his boyfriend were going to make out in a cage in a cage with all these people who had come to see a cage fighting match. And we knew it would turn into a riot. And... Um, I did it uh, two nights in a row. The first night I did it, somebody um, actually jumped over the cage and started trying to beat me up. And then everyone else in the audience started throwing these kind of metal chairs at me inside the cage. But luckily I'd kind of foreseen that there would be a kind of riot and I had a little sort of trap door built. Watching uh, the beginning of The Dictator where there's the track scene, track and field scene, where uh, you have the starter's pistol and then make sure nobody beats you in the uh, the 50-yard dash or 100-yard dash. Uh, what kind of athlete are you? Um, I would say I'm a pretty bad athlete, actually. Uh, I wasn't going to say it, but but I'm glad you said it. Yes. I mean, if you look carefully, you'll see, um, you know, quite a bit of a belly. Um, yeah, I'm, I think I'm basically pretty bad at uh, sports. And try and I try to not exercise as much as I can. The the uncomfortable moments that you have in the dictator that uh, you know he's he he loves that the people are oppressed and uh, you know everything about having a 
th- there's an awkward scene with the baby and uh, yes, he but- delivers. Uh, he ends up working. He's kind of a Colonel Gaddafi type figure. He ends up down and out working in a vegan health food store in Brooklyn, <laughs> and uh, there's a scene where somebody's pregnant there, and he ends up delivering a baby. Yeah. But you, <laughs> you make it sound so, like, common, of course. You know? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, this happens all the time. Yeah, of course. I mean, the reason that he, no one knows what to do. This woman is, like, in labor, and, you know, everyone's freaking out. And he goes, you know, well, I once put a bowling pin inside the journalist. This is just the same in the opposite, you know. So he ends up taking the baby out. Does your wife ever say, Sasha, what are you doing? You know, I try to keep um, everything out of the house. I mean, on Bruno, <laughs> one time I came back, there was a scene of the dominatrix, and I came back uh, having been whipped quite badly by this female dominatrix, and she broke my thumb, actually, with her by kicking me. And I was actually bleeding. There were welts all over me. And um, she did sort of raise an eyebrow, just going, you know, how was work today, honey? And I go, <laughs> I said it was fine. And she actually came on set one time during Bull Rat, and um, unfortunately the police were called, and I was suddenly had to sort of escape in a car and was like, uh, there were only three sort of police cars. So she never really uh, came back to set after that. Now, I remember you taking a flight back from New Orleans when the national title game was there, and you forgot that you had made fun of Alabama uh, fans? Yes. And, and I, I talked to somebody who said... Sasha was in New Orleans and forgot all about Alabama playing for the national championship. How nervous were you? Oh, well, that's right. Well, in the Ali G show, I did a little bit for um, – we did a little bit in the Alabama game. In It was the Crimson Tide were playing. Yeah. And I was obviously – Bruno's a sort of gay Austrian port, and I was sort of being quite camp and joining the cheerleaders – on the pitch, on the field, and essentially 80,000 people in the crowd started booing me and throwing stuff at me. And uh, I had hired a bodyguard that day, and I turned to see where he was, and he was running out of the stadium. All I, all I could see was the back of his head. And the cameraman said to me, he said, listen, he goes, I'm from here, and you're not going to get out of here alive. And so I ended up sort of having to change my outfit and walk out with like a limp and pretending to be like a, you know, slightly disabled. And then I went to New Orleans the other day and the Crimson Tide were there. They were playing. Yeah. And I thought, wow, this, this could go very bad. So I generally kind of stayed inside, yeah. Game plan with the ashes on Ryan Seacrest. Did you accomplish what you wanted to accomplish at uh, the, uh, the Oscars? The Oscars. Well, the strange thing was that I was banned from the Academy Awards, which was, you know, I was in this movie, Hugo, uh, that Martin Scorsese directed. So I was invited, obviously, because it got nominated. But then the Academy freaked out. Uh, the head of the Academy called my agent and said that if, you know, if Sasha turns up within half a mile of the Academy Awards, we have 250 plainclothes FBI agents and he will be arrested. <laughs> so obviously that made me want to kind of turn up even more. <laughs> and uh, so we managed to turn up there. I had this urn filled with, you know, the allegedly Kim Jong-il's ashes. <laughs> and um, Finally, you know, I had a limo there, and the sort of police and the FBI surrounded the limo. They said, we want to uh, search the car because we believe that you're bringing in live ammunition and live arms (laughs) into the Academy Awards. And so what I didn't want to do is I didn't want them to check the car because I knew it had the urn in it. Um, So, you know, I had two um, female virgin guards, which is uh, this character, Admiral General Aladdin, has 25 virgin guards who offer his who are his security i check their virginity every night with the head of my penis um and so i said you know the cop came in and i just said um you know listen if you want to strip search me or you want to strip search the girls fine and the guy the cop blushed and decided not to check inside the car so we managed to kind of smuggle the urn into the academy awards do you feel bad for ryan seacrest well um Listen, it was nothing malicious. It was a bit of flour over his suit, which, you know, it was easy to kind of brush off. And I ended up sending him a new identical jacket the next day um, with a little label inside that said, made in a Wadia w- by child slave labor. <laughs> oh, God. Well, good luck with the movie. Uh, Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, it was great to have you on and a lot of laugh out 
Now, you know what? If you if your goal was to make me feel awkward or uncomfortable, you did a damn good job. What about if my goal was to make you laugh? Uh, you made me laugh. Okay, great. Oh yes, and the uh, helicopter scene. Yeah. Yes, uh, and the baby scene. Yeah, there were there were probably uh, five laugh out loud, hard uh, laugh out loud moments there. Well, uh, I might question in that. I might say there's some more than that, but still. <laughs> well, you have to know what I laugh at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I tell you what, the good thing about this is, you know, when I edit the movie, I I play it out to like 500 people every week and then re-edit it. And the laughs sort of are, you know, as kind of big as they were in Borat. So I would say if you liked Borat, I think this will be your kind of movie. Yeah, I agree. I loved Borat. And I think I laughed out loud six times. All right, okay. So cool. there you go. All right, cool. I've got, you, I've got you figured now. Sasha, thank you, and good luck with thank uh, the movie. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me on. Okay. Right. Okay. Sasha Baron Cohen, uh, the actor, comedian, and the movie The Dictator. I thought five laugh out loud moments was good, if you know my sense of humor.